business. And then I called my dad and told him I achieved my life goal. Because... <laughs> So um, inside Wizards of the Coast, uh, as you can imagine, there was a lot of dispute about how to fix the D&D &D business. And one of the big problems with D&D &D is that it had kind of split into a whole bunch of different games over the years. And TSR, in an attempt to try and keep the revenue flowing, had published a lot of products every month so that they could get as much revenue as possible from the people that were still buying Dungeons & Dragons products. And that was a bad strategy. Um, interestingly enough, it kind of mimics some of the things that, that White Wolf was doing at the same time, although White Wolf was doing them for slightly different reasons. Uh, TSR took its core franchise and broke it up into a bunch of bits and pieces. White Wolf took a really good franchise, The World of Darkness, and managed to sell it a lot of different ways. And even though those things kind of look the same, they actually have different results and they were probably different businesses in a good sense, not a bad sense. So uh, it was pretty clear that we were going to have to do a new version of Dungeons & Dragons and that the new version of D&D needed to be the unifying thing that was going to bring all the people playing all the different kinds of Dungeons & Dragons back to the table. But the business is in really bad shape. We didn't have a lot of time. And frankly, it was probably impossible for one small group of developers inside Wizards of the Coast to figure out all the different permutations of all the kind of games that everybody who was playing D&D wanted to play. So I came to a meeting one day and I said, screw it, let's just give D&D away and let people do it any way they want to. And everybody looked at me and said, you're fucking crazy. Um, and I said, yeah, that's who I am. I'm the guy who doesn't think outside the box. I'm the guy who doesn't think there is a box. Um, and what I want to do is I want to take some of the stuff that we're seeing in the free software movement, and I want to write a license that's going to let people use Dungeons and Dragons pretty much any way they want to. And if they want to sell it, they can sell it and make money on it. And if they want to give it away, they can give it away. And when they come up with really good ideas, we're going to take that stuff and put it back into D&D so that D&D will get better over time. And that was called the Open Gaming License, and we did that. And it worked really, really well. And it taught me a lot about how much freedom you should give people. And that answer, in my opinion, is all of the freedom. You should just give them all of the freedom. People, people who are given freedom tend to do really good things with it. And that's what we want to do at White Wolf. We want to trust you guys in the camp, do the right thing. So when Greg says, you know, we're going to let you as the organization figure out what you want to do, we're dead serious. We're going to let you figure out what you want to do. And then we're going to support you 100%. And if you have problems, we're going to help you through the problems. We're going to give you advice. We're going to give you some perspective. We're going to tell you what we think might work. But if you guys come to us tomorrow with a plan and you have developed a plan, we're going to be there to tell you we want you to do the plan. And if you come to us tomorrow and say, we want to have a worldwide chronicle based on Vampire the Masquerade, we're going to say, awesome. Have fun. That's what we want you to do, because we want you guys to have the freedom. Okay, let me talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about today in this particular presentation. This is actually going to be a pretty brief segment of today's discussion. My part is going to be fairly brief. I want to talk about how we're going to evolve the business of White Wolf Publishing over the next couple of years. We're going to talk today about some strategies. I can't talk a lot about the tactics, and I can't give you a lot of details, because we're still kind of figuring out how to implement these strategies. But this roadmap is going to be a pretty good reflection of what the future holds for, uh, for White Wolf Publishing. There's a legend about Robert Johnson, great blues guitarist. If you ever have a chance to listen to Robert Johnson, you should. The legend is that he went down to a crossroads down here in the south, and he met the devil. And the devil tuned his guitar and gave it back to him, and in exchange for his soul, he let Robert Johnson become the greatest blues musician of all time. He gave him supernatural blues power. Now, White Wolf Publishing, we've come to something of a crossroads. It's been a very long and very strange trip. World of Darkness is almost 20 years old. White Wolf has been a leader in this segment of what we call supernatural horror for so long that the assumptions and the style and the vision that are baked into the World of Darkness have become the new norm. When we watch things like Blade or True Blood or The Vampire Diaries, we see the world darkness in a twisted, through a glass, darkly way in those IPs. Uh, we know that the things that have been put into Vampire the Masquerade, into Werewolf, into Changeling, have percolated through pop culture to the point where a lot of people don't even know where they came from anymore. Um, and that's not a good thing for us as a business, for obvious reasons. When people don't know that you're the creative source of something interesting, they don't tend to buy your products. So we need to work on fixing that problem, but we also need to work on figuring out how to take our own business, our existing business, into the future. The tabletop role-playing game business is not doing very well. 
It's fading away, actually. In 1997, when I wrote the business plan for Five Rings Publishing, we assumed there were 5,000 retail stores in the United States and Canada, and that was based on a lot of really good information we got from other companies in the publishing business, including White Wolf, who were very open with us at the time about what their numbers were. When I was at Wizards of the Coast, in the year 2000, based on market research studies we did, we estimated that that number of stores, full-line game stores, stores that carried lots of different kinds of gaming products, were about 2,000 stores. Today, there's approximately 750 of those stores left. And there are more stores closing than there are opening every day. This is not a healthy business. However, the world of darkness has always been a lot bigger than just tabletop role-playing games. Uh, it was a pioneer in... Uh, live-action role-playing, obviously. Camarilla is the most vital and visible part of that legacy business. And there's groups, large and small, all around the world who use the World of Darkness to do LARPing, not just uh, in the cam, but outside the cam. Uh, and we've been successful about licensing our IP. Uh, there's been several successful video games. We've uh, put it into novels. We've used it for board games. And now that we've merged with CCP, uh, we're going to be evolving it again into the cutting edge of social gaming, the massively multiplayer online game. So White Wolf Publishing has a strategy to deal with the fact that the print business, the physical products business, is slowly going away. We went down to the crossroads, and we didn't meet a devil. We met a weird group of Vikings, and they think like us, and they drink like us, uh, and they're coming with us to the future. White Wolf as a standalone company just wasn't big enough to make the kind of changes that we needed to be successful to continue publishing role-playing games and the support products. Uh, but now that we're part of a larger organization with a much larger pool of resources, we have what it will take to move that business forward. The combined CCP and White Wolf Publishing business is large enough and technically sophisticated enough to fund the necessary work to build and deploy a whole new generation of support tools for our games. And today we're going to give you a first glimpse of what those tools will be. Just as the business of paper-based RPG publishing seems to be reaching the end of its life cycle, a whole new market is opening. We're still printing old school books, uh, but we've already begun thinking about and planning for an evolution to a digital future. One thing we are committed to is avoiding locking our customers into any specific platform or vendor. We're going to be continuing to target the PDF format as our standard means of distributing digital content for the world of darkness. Uh, we don't want to lock our users into uh, uh, a platform like iTunes, where you have to buy products from Apple, then you have to play them on Apple, uh, um, you know, um, iPods. Both the Nook from Barnes & Noble, which is uh, here on the left, and the Kindle DX, which is on the right, both support PDF natively. Uh, it's too early to tell what the best ebook reader is going to be, and this is an area of technology that is evolving really, really rapidly. And we know that Apple's got something uh, in the closet that's coming soon as well. We don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm sure it's going to be pretty amazing. Um, I have some indications that it's going to support PDF as well. So even if it's an Apple product, it probably won't require us to lock in to a platform. Uh, I'm going to be buying an ebook this year. I'm going to buy a Kindle DX. Um, the DX that you see here is, uh, it's a little bit hard to tell because the Nook is uh, designed to show just a single page of a regular book. But the DX was designed for college textbooks. The idea that they had was that they could sell the DX to college students and then sell them the textbooks that they buy, which have ridiculously high markups. But the interesting thing about college textbooks is that many of them are roughly the same size and format as a classic tabletop role-playing game from White Wolf. So on the Kindle DX, you don't have to scroll around on the screen. Each page is displayed in the full size with the full aspect ratio. It's, uh, it's going to be an awesome way to view and access a role-playing game product. Eventually, um, we'd like to ensure that you'll be able to access all of our back catalog and all of our new products in their electronic forms. Uh, our friends at One Bookshelf have pioneered uh, the business of producing role-playing products in PDF, and we're going to continue to work with them on a go-forward basis. We're also building a lot of infrastructure into the White Wolf website, and uh, that website's going to be getting a big overhaul this year. Uh, we're going to speed it up. We're going to strip it down so it'll have less confusing stuff on it. And we're going to use a new content 